Mindful as well with this early Oracle pick, Nigma was still confident enough to uh, pick the Pugna into that. Obviously, the Decrepify is a good way to stop some of this aggression coming out from particularly the Ricky and the Huskar, but that can easily be dispelled by the Oracle's Fortune's End. Yeah, and of course, the Fate's Edict can just completely remove the damage element that you can throw as a Pugna as well. Yep. Yeah. So he might just find himself not being a hero, at least very early on into the game. That's the way it's starting to feel, but I understand why they pick it right. Even if you don't have a good game, because you're playing at the free roll, unlike where you play in the mid, where it's this two, it doesn't have to set the timings. It doesn't have to be the one shoving towers early on. You just later on do that, and you still have your relevance. It's like a two pugna, it eventually becomes a medic. That will happen naturally as a, a free pugna anyway. You just become the savior on the back line. Unless he just gets trashed in lane, then you're having a rough even time. Even then, even then, like, you can still just life drain from afar. That's, I think that's almost always your job as a pugna as the game goes on. You go up, you never blast, and if someone gets jumped, you save them as best you can. I think it's kind of why the hero fell off a little bit in terms of popularity in the mid. And moving away from these tempo carries more towards farming heroes for a while and then straight into kill type mids most of the time right now. We can see a lot of this aggression being put up onto the top side of the map. Obviously, the tri lane's happening here. Fada trying to get as much done as he can. You've got multiple orbs of venom on Fada as well as the three. It's uh, forcing Miracle back a little bit. Nico not having the easiest time either. GH doing his best to force him back. Decrepify being used in combination as well to make sure he's taking that maximum amount of damage. Yeah, the beautiful thing about the Ricky is you can leave him alone to extent just because he can use the blink strike to CS. Once he gets two points in it, it's decent for that purpose. So even the Decrepify won't necessarily stop you all times. Limp is getting bullied a little bit by Wii so far. The first few waves definitely going his way, and he's forced to use the Fairy Fire already. Definitely a sink or swim style of uh, mid laner on Limp. Some days he can just completely dominate. There's absolutely nothing the enemy team can do. Other times it's like, come on Limp, you're better than this. Yeah, the thing that is kind of interesting with Huskar is the way that some oh, players... Miracle, top really side, getting a bit low. Well, there you won't get away. Buddy Free used this exact same trick against him in the first game. Slap down a tree and completely destroy him with it. And it works again. See, I'm assuming this time no T-Tours? No T-Tours, we came up. We saw it last time as well. It was in the mid where we were expecting a kill because we almost went down as well. Limp, oh no, not... All right, well, he's not having a good time. He at least had a salve brought out. He'll have to immediately use it though. So regen battle is starting to go a little bit in favor of Limp as he'll start to complete those braces soon. And you can see, we have a look. I know it's only two and a half minutes into the game, but just switch over to the net worth and you can see a clear leader so far. This trial lane working out very nicely for Alliance with the Timbersaw. Something you don't even get to say very often, right? Traditionally, Tim was always seen as this greedy, XP-reliant hero that needs his space. Get out of my lane. But when you're up against the Monkey King and you're just stemming him from getting that free, they're getting full value. And and this was the thing that Alliance done so well in game one that worked for him. It was easier in a one-on-one -on -one vacuum to shut out Miracle. But now they invest all their resources because they realize that is key to Nigma's success. Too true. Nico and uh, Mind Control having a bit of a brawl down the bottom. Both sitting very low on HP. Nico's going to have to be careful that he doesn't get harassed down with his decrep. Yeah, he's definitely... He's got a salve on the way out. It's going to be a while until it arrives, though. Mid lane, however, we starting to feel the pain as Limp now has two points to the burning spears. This is where... Oh, they're called in GH. Oh, well, free on free now. GH did get a little bit of XP advantage because Hanskin's now only level one. Finally reaches two, so... Now just come down to the fact that Timber has the advantage. Mind Control's going to have to be very careful in this bot side. He's just hit onto his level 3. Nico Baby's full level ahead, and they've got an entire creep wave underneath this tower. And then top. Miracle goes down. They move quickly. And GH is forced back completely. This is worrying. I think if Timber gets to 4 unimpeded, this lane can't be assaulted anymore. And then the question is, where do you put the Monkey King in that situation? Because... If you switch the lane, they're just going to follow. Maybe they need to try and sneakily do a few stacks, get him to level up the primal spring. 
<laughs> get a bit of farm into himself. Oh, man. One for one trade. Let's actually bring each other down. We're looking at top still because we we're just expecting things to pop off again. And I mean, it's a cute idea with the Primal Spring, but what if you get the Satya? Too much heals. Yeah, way too much. You can see the sustain build that they're trying to go here as well on the Husker, getting the double bracer, just picking up the uh, Gloves of Haste. So trying to get the better of these trades in the mid lane. Weehar's going to be able to get the Observer Ward kill as well, if he wants to, which he will. Will it get denied? No. Nah. No, Limp passed off that opportunity. But yeah, the Bracers are just so good in this lane. Notice how before he was just taking so much damage out of the Astrals, now it's just a mild tickling. And that stage, if you're Wee right now, you're just praying that you can reach 6 before you get picked off again. Mind control? Oh, in the meantime, Ooh. Monkey King's in trouble here. Trying to heal up, but they use the root play from Oracle. 33 stayed on top of Miracle all times. So chain away. They might be able to get him here. Father chasing in, and he doesn't have the vision. Monkey King just able to get out of range before the next Purifying Flames comes in. And now he's going back in with the Boundless Strike on the two. Father Fairy fires up. Hands going to try and save the day, but GH still gets the kill with the assistance of Kuroki. Nice double stun coming through from GH. That rotation up to the top side, really coming in handy. A lot of this pressure still being put onto Miracle. He's sitting down in fourth on net worth, but still doing all right. Now as well, Mind Control catching up on that experience. A bit ballsy here on Nico Baby, trying to go in onto him. He's trying to be cute with the plays, but it's starting to backfire. And Nico Baby not able to do enough damage. Just missed out on the final strike. Or reused both link strikes there. This lane just seems rougher from here on out. Same as before as well, right? They could have potentially got that kill on the top side if uh, it was daytime, but there was 20 seconds that it had just transferred over to nighttime. I feel like Alliance definitely realized that and made sure to take full advantage. And now uh, we might be aggressed on too hard here. Size the clip. Limp looks to move away and just lives with 20 between. Ace Room gets him out of a sticky situation. And now we, I don't think you can tend to this lane. Now that you've used the Science Eclipse, you just have to fall back to farming. I'm interested to see if either team decides to go for a single neutral stack here. It's approaching that seven minute mark. So yeah, the double camp would be nice to maximize your opportunity for getting a neutral. Right now, they're just busy going aggressive on each other again. I'm sorry if you'll move away from Miracle in time. This Crit Wolf is going to be a huge boon for the side of Enigma, though. Just giving that similar effect that Doom became infamous for when he was being picked all the time for his Devour. And when you're going to try and try Scenario, that damage definitely is the difference, 30%. Left first down Miracle before he can even get the stacks up, and it's successful because Purifying Flames is a pain in the ass. You will chase on the GH as well. These ones are keeping him alive. This is the thing in tri lanes. You still have ones. Hanskin doesn't feel the need for one, but Fada, he knows how much he spam Purifying Flame, so he already has that stick. A nice job there, and Mind Control still doing pretty decently on this uh, bottom lane. He's not having the most farm, but he's putting a lot of pressure onto Nico Baby. I mean, when you're in position one, you shouldn't be sitting at the same uh, net worth as the off laner, and then sitting in seventh and eighth position. Definitely. This is the point where it can kind of convert a little bit, though, because you could go for a point of smoke screen if you want a seven, or now you at least are in a situation where mind control can't get an advantage out of life drain due to you having the tricks of the trade. True, but he does have the advantage in regen, both from his heal kit as well as the tango, and he's even got a cell backpack. Yeah, it's definitely something that needs to actually have a rotation happen soon. It's just a matter of how much Alliance wants to yeah, keep committing to Enigma top lane and shutting down Miracle. Because he is suffering, but obviously there's always that concern. It's the Monkey King if you give him a little bit of breathing room in the first 10-15 minutes, he will wiggle back off the back of an Echo Saber and then you could be in trouble. And then you look at the mid, you're like, which one's going to rotate? That's got to be the big thing. It feels like it's maybe a bit easier for the half guard to do so, but optimally you just want to be shoving the lane. You want to keep pressure and make sure that the OD can never arrive in the outlane to a big sign to split the play. Well, both these mid laners have just stayed put. 
They're just wanting to get everything done, get as much farm in this mid lane as they can. Huskar obviously getting the better of the lane thus far. Very, very strong in the early game. I think Alliance are reasonably happy with how things have gone. It's just about how they're going to translate that into the mid game. We can see an armlet build being picked up by Limp, wanting to make sure he can be uh, as topped up as possible, especially against the burst damage that can potentially come through from the Pugna. Exactly, and then when you're looking across at the other members, you're like, okay, so where is Alliance's blue together? When does it come online? Nico, baby, needs to start getting some gold, then probably looks towards something like a Diffusal Blade, just so you can ramp up pressure. It's not the type of lineup where you want to sit back and see what Nigma does in 20 minutes time. Yeah, it looks like GH and Mind Control, they've got the outpost in their sights. It's only 15 seconds until it's going to capture. Will there be some repercussions for them? Get the lift off? No. That's just dead. He didn't want it because he knew if he left it straight away, then, well, he'd have no way to protect himself, and also they'd still capture it afterwards. So well, he just dies it. anyway. Yeah. Very valuable. I think the thing for him is he didn't expect the Pugnum to be there as well. But a little bit of a disconnected rotation. It looked like Alliance were trying to finally come and address bot and assist there, but the way in which they do it didn't feel as fluid as we sometimes see from the boys. As a result, now you can see the pressure is alleviated a little bit from Miracle, so now he can actually at least get some CS on this lane against the Timber. Were there any uh, trends that showed themselves in the first two games? Like I said, I was out a bit before, so didn't get to see games one and two. I think it was the Miracle focus mainly, and also just enabling Nigma maybe to get kills like this as Mind Control gets caught out bot. But usually it just comes down to Nigma's ability to unlock Miracle's farm, uh, is how they measure their success. And usually that's off the back of having playmakers in your other lane. But when you look at Nigma's other lanes, they do have something I wouldn't call playmaking type heroes. I call them casual farmers pushes. And as I'm talking about that, Huskar does go down. GH. Oh, well, that should not be happening. He found a solo kill onto the Huskar. Yeah. I mean, that's the danger of farming with that uh, Berserker's blood getting very low. Didn't quite pick up the armlet just yet, but I don't think it would have made much of a difference. It's also the lethality of the new Vendetta, right? Ever since they added the break to it against a hero like Huskar, who should usually go to heal up enough. Nice kill to 33, because he can't escape anymore. They converge and they address the timber issue, now dead for 25 seconds. And in the bot lane, they're trying to find a cheeky plan of mind control, but the Crepify buys too much time and he could maybe can't get the kill. He's a speed little boy as well, mind control. He's got the uh, wind lace as well as the boots of speed. He should be fine underneath his tower. He was really patient as well, making sure that uh, he saved all of his magic damage until the Fates Edict was used by Fada. Continuing to harass down Nico, baby, who's... I wish we had a stat for how much gold he spent on all of these uh, regen items, because I'm sure it would be probably top of everyone's in this game. That would be a nice thing to have again. There's loads of things people can ask for. Smokes is the other thing. Obviously, get them on some of the uh, UIs being designed by people like uh, Leia. But something we don't just inherently have in the game. Maybe. TI is coming, maybe. Could be there. Yeah, TI. Give it up. Then we all can. I don't know about that. I don't know about Nico Baby's chances of living either. He's just gone. And there's the rotation. They do have this habit doing this as well, but this is usually uh, when we see a lane shift first from Alliance. Is Nigma trying to just shift the bot? Usually it's to recover mind control's lane, but in this case it's just to easily push on and take a tower. And it really amplifies the importance of Nigma getting those two shrines at the 10 minute mark as well. Fado was about a quarter of a level away from hitting his level six, and you'd have to think that uh, Nico would have lived if he had the, um, the false promise available. Imagine, so maybe there's no turnaround play, but at least you still have your boss one alive and not necessarily sick this poor in the game. Which, by the way, when you actually look at the net worth, Cookie's been farmed like crazy already. 4.2k net worth, about to surpass the Timber Saw at this rate. He's got that mech, it's that timing. They're going to look to try and push oh, no. as soon as they can. Hanskin. GH, well, he played him like a fiddle right there. Low HP and Hanskin, despite his inability to likely even get that kill, kept right clicking down. So it's just a simple spike carapace play into a rotation from mind control to pick off an easy kill. And all of a sudden, we, this OD that was still a little bit roughed up, didn't have the greatest start to the lane, is 
just sit on top of the net worth. Already halfway towards the Aghanim Scepter. And we can see a bunch of Nigma heroes grouped up around this top side. I think they might be even trying to go for a kill onto 3-3, who wisely timber chains back. I'm a bit interested in this build from Miracle as well. Looks like he's going for an Oblivion Staff into a Diffusal Blade. A little bit of a weird choice. Well, you should just be going for the Echo Saber, right? And then just cross into Diffu. Yeah. But I was, I was thinking maybe more going into the Diffusal Blade first, right? Because he's got this uh, early timer. You want to push the advantage as much as they can. And early on, you're not going to have the chance to go for something like the BKB. He's already got the broom handle, so he's going to get plenty of hits off. I just thought it was a bit of an odd choice. Yeah, I, I get where you come from. I think the Diffu, like, it's bearable in terms of dependency when you're playing this game as Monk King. Like, how much do you need in this game? Like, who are you looking to burn the mana off? Is it that critical? There are some heroes, Ooh. it makes so much sense. All the TPs go on top side. Yep, Jen makes the other one arrive as well. Jump in, straight forward. They've already got the Timber. They're gonna follow up with the Rubik kill and Fada. Stuck on the tree line. They died too quick. He couldn't even hit R. He couldn't even save anyone's life with the false promise. He would just die as well. Look at this army of Chen creeps. It's absolutely nuts. You've got the mechanism. Yeah, you've got the Divine Favor as well. So everyone's healing up for a crap ton of HP. And uh, they're going to look to push down this top lane ASAP. The only thing I'd love to see him replace now is if you can actually get a Cobalt instead of a Stormcrafter, and then you have the ability to just pursue constantly. I think, that's... I think they've still got that anyway, right? They've got the Monkey King that can just dance through the trees. Oh, definitely, but it's the, it's the follow-up, right? That, that move speed is quite nice. GH will go down, and I was about to praise this guy because he has been kind of pivotal to their success in the last few minutes. Mid lane, we huh? Move um, through. DP's gonna come in though. He's only down to half HP, and this is looking a little bit dicey at best. They actually need to get out. Sanskrit gets dropped. Timber is already gone. And Nico Baby might be the follow up kill. Moves away with a blink strike just in time though. I was actually a little worried if he was going to get burst down while Kuro's long TP was happening because the uh, the TP through from mind control happened first. No hand of God, and of course no mech unless he's standing right next to him, but able to turn it around onto the timber saw and you know, top T1 tower's gone. Let's go for mid. This is part of the scary factor of the OD though. It's, it's similar to how Shaker was, right? When you'd be going for the Ags rush where it's actually ridiculous how long it takes to kill him. And he didn't even take the health talent. He's just so goddamn tanky and so high up in the network that he's not a kill anymore. And they go deep. So look at the kills. They'll find Fada. Miracle will be giving his life for this cause. But there might be vengeance in response. Dust is going to come out. We doesn't want to commit for this, though. They mistimed that. So Nikki Baby is just hidden and runs away. No hand of God use, which I thought might have been a little bit odd. But Kuro deciding. Not worth it. A bit of a lack of communication, as you said. Yeah. You'll never learn otherwise. You know, if you're always relying on Papa, you won't be independent. Always trying to offer him at least. And it should be so easy to save now because we now have that axe. As you said, the hand of God, the mech. There's so many elements to Nygma's lineup. And then you look at the side of Alliance. It's your classic frustrating five scenario where if you pick this one off, they have no way of resetting. They have no way of surviving. If you can find a kill in a Fada, which in this type of game is quite easy for them, you're just done. DH, gonna find 33, who's looking pretty done. Kills will buy him time though, dodges out the stun. However, there is a follow-up and it is a pesky one. Yeah, he's straight dead. Yeah, there's no escape. And this is this is the thing I was highlighting earlier with the, the Venda. This passive is ridiculous in this game against the Timber. We saw earlier when he got a solo kill on the Huskar as well. Even against the Ricky, actually, to stop him going in bits, it's an insanely good Nick's game. Yeah. Normally, I'd get a little uh, tilted if this was my team, and, uh, you know, while someone's dying in lane, people are jungling, but decent timing, right? They still had a couple of uh, neutral items still to obtain on the Alliance side, and that's going to get them the uh, firepower that they need to close this 6k net worth gap that they're uh, currently fighting against. And in that regard, they at least get a very good item on the limb. They found the Grove, though, one of the better items the Huskar. Maybe one of the best ones, actually, if not the best in the tier two, at least, that you can get his hands on. And wisely going for the early BKB as well, realizing that you know, Miracle has gone for this Echo Saber first. Diffusal Blade is probably one of the more obvious choices for the next one, so they're going to have the advantage there from being able to counter that. But also, you've got the OD who, with the Ag Scepter a lot harder to counter any sort of aggression coming from the Husker. 
that's the biggest one. It's all about that axe, and that's why it was the baby's jump one next. Stinker baby that needs time to take too much damage. Oh, coming out. False promise will get Niku baby out, but Hans can be left behind. Goes down just trying to actually return some fire here as GH gets the kill. Looks this like they might get one out. Was a little blind. Still hunting. And he's faster than Fada here, so he's gonna have to address his nice side head though. And now punishment for GH. You're being a bad, bad boy. But the heals are good enough to get him out in one piece. They'll take control of the vision game in this area, and then just probably return to hit the tier twos. Heals good enough, saving that magic stick until the very last second, so he did have the carapace if he needed it. Uh, the name of the game is fine, Nico, baby. And they know. They ping it out straight away. They know where he is. He'll hide in his own little world, but when you come out, there is a violent death awaiting you. Killing spree. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. That's okay. Not everyone's in the jungle this time, Dan Hook. 33 is cutting waves. And might be punished for it in a second. It's just a matter of whether we think it's worthwhile for the kill, and he does. You can already see the TP coming in from Monkey as well. There's one thing you can count on. It's a timber getting a little bit too greedy every once in a while. Yules, let's wrap the TP. Oh, he does make it in time. No, oh, the Battle Strike Miracle gets across. And he is gone. It's just a matter of how much of that time he can waste. And not much. The GH is here, ready for the stun follow up. He's just dead. And look at that. The power of Chen. Immediately back across the mid. Miracle's like, sup, what are we doing here? Are we thinking Roche? Are we thinking more towers? Or you just want to go casually kill a Husker? Yeah, they were pinging out the Roche. And looks like Kuro. Be looking to get a ward up before take it or maybe even one more pick off before they get the opportunity yeah you have a window when you still have this jingu buff active so it's worth holding on to one charge if you think someone's coming out uh it's something we saw really become popular amongst mids when this hero started to emerge right as he's rotating the out lanes quickly allowing you to then flip to another lane with that buff still active and find additional kills because it is so potent Miracle, or oh sorry, 3-3 three, three rather, going towards the uh, Spirit Vessel to counter the Miracle Jingu Mastery, but you can see from his uh, kills and deaths, only one kill and uh, two assists on 3-3 three, three so far, so no stacks into that Burn of Shadows, no charges rather. Be a little bit difficult, they're going to have to start winning these fights, but it's going to get more and more difficult with that net worth lead just continuing to grow, now reaching five figures with a 10k lead. Here indeed. And this is just the inherent issue when you allow Dingmo's lineup to begin to snowball, right? When the Monkey King does get a little bit out of control, you've got this issue where you don't actually have a natural spirit vessel builder, right? You haven't got supports that get GPM talents anymore. It's not easy for them to grab it. And Rubik, there's so many items this hero wants, right? You're probably looking at the Aether Lens, then you're thinking Blink Dagger or Four Star or Yules. These are all more important because you're not tanky enough to just hold a spirit vessel. I feel like Limp's gonna get unlucky and get bashed twice here by Roche. He's looking good. And a much needed boom for the side of Alliance. Being on the mid though, they might be one hero down as 43 gets found out and GH instantly to the Veda. Moving forward, looking for more. They're not quick enough though. Or are they? Four star forward. Four star. Miracle gets back in the tower, but they see him perfectly. They lift him out of the tower. Disarm as well. He goes to the Wukongs. They're trying to heal him up. Hand of God. Life drain as well. Everything for him. The BKB was used in that map. Huskar. He's already lost the Aegis. Mind control by the time he crept up. Able to move away. Miracle is going to live. Tries to turn around. False Promise is going to come out. And Lim is just stunned up by GH. Not able to do anything against all this damage coming in. He's definitely going to fall. And Miracle. He's sustaining for all this. Science Glow's thrown down. He will die. But it is for the right cause. As they kill four members of Alliance. And they take that Aegis away. Oh, that was some insane team fight coming through from Nigma. Nearly flawless execution. Yeah, you lose Miracle at the end, but the amount of attention put onto him by all of these physical damage heroes inside the Wukong command, it took so long to kill him. You had the hand of God. I don't think Guardian Greaves even connected onto him because he was in the middle of an astral imprisonment, but we are in him working in perfect synergy to make sure that he was surviving for the longest time. It was definitely the case. There's a clutch Wukong's coming out just in time, and we it was almost like he was just standing there. But the miracle was like, just do it. Just press that button, nuke them out of existence right there. Because their eyes are so fixated on, on one hero, you have to consider that Nigma's lineup right now is not this one carry lineup. There is two carries you have to address. And when you're sitting on the side of Alliance, you don't actually have the firepower. Nico Baby's still not strong enough. He needs to actually be an item ahead of these type of heroes to be able to fight them. 
And 33. He's out of mana. Soon to be out of life. That spirit vessel that he's been coveting, that he's been going towards, looking at as a poster is all hoping for, and GH just comes in and mocks him with his own one. What a, what a handy thing to have, you know. Nyx Assassin pause for six charges on a spirit vessel coming up against Asuka and a Timbersaw. Insane. Didn't ask for more and Lim, he might be forced to use the BKB here. There it is, he has to throw it out, but the damage from Miracle. Whew. Boy, it's hitting hard right now. Uh, so we can get worse from here on out. It is the last thing you want this stage of the game is the heart scouts to be expending BKB charges like that already down to the eight second mark. Only recently and they'll be seeing up. that as a big win. The uh, the BKB pop means the next tower push that they go for, assuming that, uh, well, actually the waves are reasonably far pushed in from uh, Alliance's end. So I don't think they'll be able to get it. Maybe the priority will go towards the neutral creeps, which uh, now are going to be spawning those tier three items. Might give some sort of way for Alliance to catch up. Orb of Destruction could be on the cards. Much needed at this stage. And you already see the move from Nigma. They smoke up and they want to reconnect towards the bot area as they understand that Alliance is going to pivot around Nico Baby and try and enable him, get him into this game. Maybe off the back of that 50 talent again with the extra damage. But instead, Nico Baby able to jump first. GH protected by the Astral though. The Astral out to keep the Huskar out of the equation. Wukong's goes down in this choke point. A lot of trouble for Lim as he just gets evaporated. There's no way he can survive. And on the side, Fada. Nothing he can do even as he got stunned up and killed off. Double kill already for Wii. He wants more though. He's feeling a little bit peckish. I'll find someone trying to limp away into the base. There's actually Hanskin who's brought down. There's three dead now on the side of Alliance. The net comes out from GH. They see Nico Baby as well as they've dusted him up. He will fight against Nick's assassin, but this wasn't a fight he wanted to take as four members of Alliance are dead. And 33 just waving over his teammates going, don't worry guys, I've almost got this spirit vessel. The only response coming out is, when are you going to get an urn charge, buddy? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they were to call it if they lose one more big team fight and it transitions into an objective. Surprise me either if Kuro had the exact timing of the BKB on uh, the Huskar in mind because there was only five seconds left when he went down there. They knew that they had the ability to take that fight with a clean victory. And just those small differences, that's what makes the mile, especially in this Huskar type lineups, it's, it's a volatile line, right? Like Huskars used to describe as these heroes that after their first Aegis pull into their second one, if they die maybe just two times, the game is almost over. They need someone else to start taking over. And this is, you know, this is a situation where Nico Baby is anywhere near to take over for this Huskar, which is what we usually see from Alliance, right? It's just passing the baton. Instead, Miracle swinging his own baton in the face of Lemp. They're going to force Wii away, but the Astrals can be there to protect for longer. Forcing out the BKB from Lim. We will look to move away. Has to activate his own BKB. But too much damage done already. False Promise jumping straight away. And they can bring down the OG. He hung around. He was too focused on saving Private Miracle. And he's still going to go down. DH tries to get out, but they have his number as well. There's no easy escape from him. All of a sudden, Nigma overstay their welcome and get booted out by Alliance. Great job by 3-3 there, creating so much attention around the mid lane. Honestly, they shouldn't be worried. He was sitting right here in uh, between the tier two and tier three towers in mid. There's no way he's gonna take any sort of objectives. Tier one was still up, but uh, drawing two heroes away from Nygma's push forward and Alliance realizing that they had the numbers advantage, immediately jumping on, getting those BKBs popped and taking a bit of control back in this game, maybe. It's still a 15K net worth lead though. Empire's downfall starts with one small step and this could be the beginning of the Alliance come up but they're gonna have to do this a few more times and as you said Nigma, they might fall for that trick once they might get distracted by 33 once not necessarily again of course the advantage 33 has now is if he shows off these fights he does now have that spirit vessel he dies like this however it's not a good way to use it yeah. He's already got the stacks of the reactive armor up though yeah but the damage is way too much yeah way too much it's always, it's the Vendetta play. Every single time, Spike Carapus into Vendetta and suddenly you have no reactive armor working for you. And they even spotted out Nico, baby. They're going to hunt onto him. The net's going to come out as well. The Spirit Vessel is thrown out onto him. Nice stun. We'll get them in range and bring him low. With the Astral, that is bye-bye Nico, baby. As he'll buy a few more seconds, he won't make it out though. Miracle. Same with fire up here. He's backed up, though. They aren't playing stupid here. 
Awesome. They're going to split up. It's always this split up with a friend, right? Any rule of thumb whenever you're in a horror movie right now, and when you're blind like this in the top area, that can be the case, but they're not. They're the ones with the wars. They're the ones with the smoke rotation. And Fada is the one with no TP. Oh, <gasps> the strike. Don't see him, though. No escape for him. Close, but no cigar. You're the only one getting smoked around here. Thought maybe Enigma might try and get uh, onto that high ground. They had the full mid wave pushing in that they've already taken the super creeps from. But if you can pick off Fada, you're probably going to be able to uh, transition into that very easily anyway. Banroons as well, up in the next 20 seconds. They've taken outpost control once again. I forget what it was at 20 minutes. I want to say that it was one outpost each. But uh, Alliance definitely starved for XP this game. And finally free starve for any irrelevance in this game. He gets hit by the Vendetta, the Spirit Vessel, the Eels will buy him a few seconds. But he's dead. No reinforcements coming. His game right now is split push until my team is ready to fight. But you can see how quick Nigma just move across the map and punish that each time. Mm -hmm. Net worth's in the bin as well, sitting down in uh, seventh position. Only 8.1k net worth at 30 minutes in. That's not what you want from a Timber Saw pick, especially one that you took early on. No, they need to look at Kuro. He's just continuing to farm up crazy. He's had this Velocipus Stone the whole time. He's already got the Guardian Greaves, the Vlads as well, and 2,000 gold to spend. But you know what? Chen's never been so happy. He's just looking at all this money and wondering what the hell to do with it. It's like, team, do you need, uh, do you, do you need any salves? No, you can just heal yourself. Do you guys need wards? I'll buy more wards if I can. Could be a four staff coming for him next, or maybe a medallion into a solar crest. Could be useful for bursting down these heroes really quickly, or providing that extra little bit of protection that uh, Nigma have shown that they're, they're very capable of having for their teammates. It looks like he's made a purchase. Kind of like expensive one. Be on its way now. I think it's important he keeps for buyback as well, just because the Hand of God clutch save from cross map Ooh. could be the difference if he goes down too early. Going a holy locket on the chin. Yeah, this is definitely the point where you now save a buyback in these situations, because that Hand of God could easily clutch a fight even if you die before using any spells. I would actually love to see something like save a buyback, and then once you have it, I mean, even if you have two boots, just go boost the travel as well, so you can be just as present around the map if you get split up from your team. In fairness, though, they do still have this tier one mid, so there's not even that much pressure for him to go for that kind of level of mobility. Been scanning up into this area, you can see the smoke gank trying to catch someone from Nigma off guard. Some good vision up here, though, and they're going to see that the smoke's happened. And Miracle's going to go in with the Wukong down, the BKB. Fada has no escape and he's dead. Birdie Free will try and make his escape, but GH is hot on pursuit, looking for the perfect target. And it'll be Limp. Stuns him up, breaks him as well. Spirit Vessel is out. BKB from Nico, baby, and Limp to fight back. The buyback comes out from Fada. They have to stand and hold their ground. GH, you will buys himself some time. Birdie Free, zone away, mind control in the meantime. And GH, the hand of God healed. The Sandstorm gets dropped down as well. No one died just yet. GH is just barely going to limp, limp it away. They've already stepped false from as well. Buyback will come out from Rubik now. But on the side, Nyx is going to go down, and the tree line. It looks like Fire Free is going to join him as Miracle does get himself the double kill. And Limp, get a low on HP, needs to move away. The Silence will protect him from the huge damage coming out with the fuel form from Weeha. But he can follow up. Jump in. Limp knows he has to fight here, but Decrepit fight. Blood up on the fight. We goes deeper. This sub as well. Ash would buy a little bit of time, but this love the fight well. Fada is going to fall in the meantime. That's going to be his dieback, but they will lose the OD. Dead for 90 seconds. Limp is still standing, and so is Nico, baby. Nigma, they have to get out. They have to back up a little bit. Miracle has one free to stand on. He's looking for a play. He's gonna jump in on the limp, who has no mana left. Might be forced to fight here. Tries to turn around. The smoke screen's gonna down. Force him back. Mind control. But Miracle's still too tanky. Ricky will hide in his own little realm of protection and move away just in time. Long range as Hanson is stepping off to the right. They will manage to survive. Almost losing their heads for trying to actually bite off more than already the delicious meal they got in OD. Very handy. I thought Nigma was doing a great job in kiting around the uh, the Huskar in that team fight. Popped his BKB very early on, had a lot of the effectiveness ruined by the Astrals being put onto the targets that get dove. I think he tried to go on to the GH's Nyx early on into it. Oh, trying to chase down Kuro at least. Take down some of these killers, babies. That he's Not the babies. His children must die. Okay, the way that you beat Chen is by killing his future, not his now. Nico, Nico, no. He has no future at this rate, but the BKB just in time. 
They didn't want to hard commit for the hits in time to kill him. So more than enough time to just hit one button and back away. But that does mean that he will not have magic immunity available to him when there's a fight around this pit. And with ODB up in 10 seconds and Roche being spawned, you can bet your ass off that's where you see a fight next. Very handy for Alliance also picking up the Orb of Destruction. Got one sitting on Miracle as well. Sure, that's going to be a key factor in this next fight. Ricky's just become a whole lot more potent. Also, Limp having this Paladin Sword just gives him so much sustain in the most crucial moments when you get down to that third HP and you can just pop the BKB. If you can't burst him with the Spirit Vessel on, he's going to recover very quickly and back, uh, suddenly your gank attempt backfires. Titan Sliver given over to 33 as well. So that extra status resistance and magic resistance going to come in handy. It's just smoke on smoke on smoke. 40, 35 minutes into it. I'm sure we've seen about six so far. Yep, smoke and kill. So let's see who's going to die because of a limp. BKB goes straight in. He's not going to mess around with that vendetta up on the side. The balance break goes down. Miracle, he's cut the back line. He's going behind them. The spirit vessel's on him. Yes, but Elias needs to retreat. And they're in trouble. The Astral is out. And it looks like Husker's too deep. False promise. He knows he has to fight. He goes deeper. Look at the Louis. But the second Astral is going to control them up. In the meantime, GH is going to go down to Fada. But Limp is against the world, and the numbers are against him as he is overwhelmed by the force of Enigma. Gets brought down, has to buy back straight away. The sun is Limp Fada! He just goes straight away. Buddy Freeze almost dead. The chase is on. Miracle gets this wrong with the battle of strike. The sun's coming out from Nico being by enough time, and they jump in. They're going to actually be able to bring him down. Wee's going to die. They'll look across. They will be able to find the kill in the meantime to 33, but they need to get Nico Baby out alive. Long range flick strike out towards Limp will allow him to escape, but Miracle is still the bully in this fight, and all of a sudden, Alliance have to back off. It's a little slow on the hand of God from Kuro, but I don't think it would have made much of a difference. The uh, instant buyback coming from Limp. It's not really all that useful, I think. A lot of the damage did come through from the other heroes on the team, but I think to back off now, Nico Baby on a shred of health and, age, uh, and mana to recover, get closer and closer to that nullifier, but it just seems like every single fight they're on a knife's edge. Exactly. We're seeing how quickly he gets burst down by Pugna's last hit stick. The level 4 Dagon, I believe, he's actually almost got the fifth one. In fact, he should be on the way out at this point. He's a scary bugger at the stage with the Decrepit Fire. When you think about how little the health ball is on the Ricky and the items he's built, he can't be brunting the, the, the high amount of the damage coming in initially. Limp has to be tanking the whole thing. And now the Limp doesn't have buyback, it's dangerous. And the back line stabbed into. Fada has to use false promise himself. BKB from Nico Baby is almost dead already. Limp, he needs to escape right now. He doesn't have his BKB anymore. He's hit up by the Spirit Vessel as well. They don't want to go up in the high ground. They don't quite know what's going on here, but they do know that Fada is no longer in the world of living. Yeah, that my back previously used a few minutes ago, so Fada is definitely not going to be a presence in this team fight. They can confidently take Roche, although... Alliance, they can see that it might be now or never, considering it. The problem is this Nyx, he just stands there with a spike carapace when you don't have your BKBs available, there's no way you can approach. Instead, Limp now has no mana, so no way of disarming them. With BKB already, and he doesn't have the attack speed, they just have to move away. Hanskin at least gets the lift down to Miracle, but the Yule's coming out on him in return, but he will not be getting out alive. Dead for 50 seconds, and that should be no more interruption for Nygma, as they can go and take a moment of silence in the pit with Roche, but instead, King's going to go split push first before being returned to Chen. Yeah, just looking to finish off that Abyssal Blade. Trying to uh, take control of the game, finish it up. I don't think they want to wait for this 40 minute timer. No, at this point, with this sort of leverage lead, 27,000 net worth up over the side of Alliance. You don't hang around. You don't want to risk Nico Baby reaching a hyper late game scenario in which he actually has ice because that's when Ricky does hit like a truck. It's getting ripped through very easily, but from Nigma's end, they're confident that the Huskar, his BKB is down to five seconds. They've been doing a fantastic job so far of timing their own BKBs to be sure that they're countering a lot of the aggression coming out from him. See, though, their, their durations aren't the longest either. Seven seconds on the Monkey King, six seconds on the OD. Jump in. Fire is a card. 
Astrals to mess with it. We are just hanging back apart to see how this one plays out. And Lim passes the BKB Pulse Promise already. He needs to start hitting hard. Miracle's going to run out of the jump in straight away. He's going to control him up. The balance strike goes out to 33. And he's already dead. And all of a sudden, Lim is going to be burned up in the middle of the mess too quickly. He's going to go down. No way back. And he's dead for 100 seconds. And the GG gets cool. Without the Huskar, there is no life for the side of Alliance. Enigma, they take game three. Yeah, they're getting closer, one game away from making it through to the minor. There's a lot more to play for for, Nick, for Enigma, right? You've got uh, Alliance and Liquid sitting on the same amount of DPC points, I believe. Eight. Where are they? Four star four, two star. Miracle gets back to the tower, but they see it perfectly. They lift him out of the tower, disarm as well. He goes to the roof they're trying to heal him up. Hand of life great as well, everything for him. The BKB was used in that map. Huskar, he's already lost the egg. By the time he crept up, able to move away. Miracle is going to live. Tries to turn around. False Promise is going to come out. And Lim is just stunned up by GH. Not able to do anything against all this damage coming in. He's definitely going to fall. And Miracle, he's sustaining for all this. Science goes thrown down. He will die. But it is for the right cause. As they kill four members of Alliance and 